Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. This is still the RV build, but this is just a dedicated wire crimping tutorial. I'm gonna, um, perfect example of why you need a set of wire crimpers and uh, why you'll need some terminals and stuff when you're doing a solar build. You can buy, you know, pre-made pre cables, but if you wanna be efficient, not waste your cable, you can get blank cable, uh, make your own links and stuff. But just like this situation, um, this cable needs to be cut down. It's way too long and I don't wanna waste this wire. So I'm going to make make up two shorter cables out of this one cable. So there's the fuse block I'm going to be using. Of course, you can see the wire is really, really long, way too long, excessive. So um, I'm going to put my terminals on here. I'm going to mark this wire, cut this wire, crimp this wire, and then hook everything up. So the easiest thing to do to get the right wire length is go ahead and put your terminals on like that. You can see. Four and all, this is four knot wire, four knot terminals, uh, tinned copper terminals. So I went ahead and put it on the fuse block right there where it's gonna go. So then I can take my wire right here and figure out you know where I want it, you know, how much slop I want over here. If I want none, you know, have to route it, which four knot is, you know, a little more challenging to work with than you know, two and knot, one knot, stuff like that. It's just so big and it can't take but such a tight bend just due to the thickness of the jacket even using this power flex cable from windy nation which is very flexible it's still just you're limited because the conductor size is so big so i've got my little loop back here that i want got how i want it right there so i'll come over here and i'll figure out where i'm going to have it buried in this terminal and then just mark it where you want to cut it so i'm going to have the copper pushed all up in here to the tapered portion of the terminal so i need to make a mark right there so you can use a Sharpie, piece of tape, whatever you got. So I'll just be using a uh, simple paint marker. I'll just mark my spot where I want to cut it to be about right there. Then I want to go ahead and since I've got it right here, so I can show you folks, I'm going to do my, where I'm going to strip it back to right there. So that's the cut mark and that's the strip mark. So all this insulation is going to come off right here. So let me uh, pull this cable then I'll take you to my crimpers and we will make this terminal up. So go ahead and cut your cable, buzz through it. Use ratchet and cutters, uh, hacksaw, sawzall, and then we'll strip the jacket off. Gonna go around it right there, strip it off with the razor knife, and uh, then it'll be good to crimp. So there's the wire stripped back. Now I'll put it into the terminal, simple as that. All right, so when you're putting your terminals on, you run a situation like this. See if y'all can see that. You got a couple of wires that don't want to behave just take a very fine point screwdriver and just kind of work them up under the edge of the terminal start under there you ain't got no uh, strays get them all tucked in there and then just kind of wiggle wiggle your wire around the terminal around like that until it's seated down in there while i crimp i'm gonna show you one more thing there's that one's made up and then I got this other one made up off camera here too. So you see both of them very similar. Like I said, if you got a little 16th gap or 30 second gap right there, don't worry about that for in the video. I'll show you to cover that up too. So I can get to focus it, there we go. Um, and another thing, you saw how I marked it to cut it. I always mark it, you know, where the wire's about up in this section. But if you, you feel like it wasn't long enough and you've got it seated in the terminal, you don't have to pull the terminal off. You can always just take your handy razor knife and you can just strip it back a little, you know, another 16th an inch at a time and just work this terminal on until you know it's seated as far as you can get it into this terminal. And another thing about making your own, own wires and stuff is you can clock the ends. So if you want one facing this way, you can offset the other end before you crimp it to make your wire loop better. So I'm gonna set this wire up and then get my right clocking to go to this terminal and this battery. I'm gonna mark it so I take it back out to the crimpers, it's in the same position. So you can have them whatever direction you want when you make your own up. That way the wire's under less stress, it bends nicer, especially on this big wire like this. So I just put it on the fuse terminal right there and you can see over here where it's not clocked the way we want it clocked. On this terminal back here. So I'm just gonna work this terminal around to the position I want it in, which is right there. So it's gonna have a nice flow around through there. So I'm gonna put that there, but I'm gonna keep my keep my mark, keep it in the same position, clocked where I want it. I'm gonna double check right there, 
So right there's where I want it. So I just take a mark right there and mark right there. So now when I take it back out to the crampers, I can line it right back up with the same spot. And there's that terminal I just showed you clocked. You can see where it's facing this way right here. Come over here to my mark. See, we offset it. So, you know, if it had been all in a bind, if you'd have put it the same direction. So if you're making your own, you know, take the strain out of the wire. Let the, rotate your terminals. Get all the strain out so the wire bends nice and easy for you. Stuff like that. You know, help you out a lot. So now let's go crimp. So this is a budget-friendly crimping tool. It's worked fine for me for, uh, I've had it at least two, two and a half years, something like that now. It's a real good, you know, crimper for the price. I can't remember the exact price, but I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description. And uh, it's got all kinds of dies, different sizes, whatever you want. Uh, so there's one four naught right there. We'll need that one. Now, I've got to dig the other one out because the only gripe about it is, is the, uh, you know, it rides around the back of your truck. It kind of flops around. Let's see. That's 500 NCM. Where's that other four naught? Let me find it. So, so I've used, I've used the snot of them one naught dies. Those are probably the ones I use the most. But we're going to go up to four naught today. So you just take that bolt off, slide that out of there, and then take the dies, slide the dies out. And there's hundreds of crimps on this set of dies right here. They're holding up good. So we're going to throw four naught in there today. So make sure you got the right, right set of dies, slide them into the channel. See, four naught. And then uh, put your bolt bolt back to the end of the tool right there put your little uh, washers and bolts on there and everything tightened up so now we got four knot die in the hydraulic crimper so with the right dies in there it's got this little valve hydraulic valve just like a floor jack or like a car jack so you close that and then what i do is i always work the uh work the crimpers up a little bit so I have to do it as much with the wire in there. So leave you a little gap in there like that. And then take your, your terminal and stuff you're gonna crimp. I got it pushed together. You see my marks, everything's lined up. And I put it in the, in the die right here. I have to like a little bit of slack off of it. There we go. Just gently get it in there where you want it. So you can see where I'm at on the terminal right there. And I got the wire in the back. Be sure to hold the wire in place as you start crimping. You won't be able to hold this wire into this terminal. So the easiest way to do that, put it on the ground, on your workbench, something like that, depends on where you're working at. Uh, so push that wire. You should be able to push it and it shouldn't move your terminal in the dies. So keep that wire tight, make sure your marks lined up and then start pushing down. And push and push and push and then you'll see the dies, you'll feel the resistance, and then the dies should be all the way closed together. Okay, you can see the first press and the width of these dies, I always press it twice. So I'll go right here behind where I lined it up the first time, the same, same notches, make sure you're lined up in the same notch, and then I press it again. Make sure that, try to turn that copper into a solid chunk inside that terminal. And again, push until you get hard resistance and then double check your your dies to make sure they're closed and that's as far as it's gonna it's gonna press it. Then release and there you go. Double double crimped through the uh, hydraulic crimper. So you can see each each press right there. Um so yeah those those dies are a little, you know, a little narrow for a full size, but you know, just do two, two cramps on it right there. And uh, yeah, there it is. Now let me show you how to, uh, how to fix this right here. All right, so to be completely professional and seal this little gap up right here, we're gonna use some three quarter inch, three to one ratio heat shrink tubing. So of course you can put it on the wire before. I always like to put it on after, so it's not my way when I'm doing my cramps and all that. So get your heat shrink tubing on there. And I line it up to the top of this portion right here of the terminal, right there, and now we'll shrink it. And then get your uh, flame maker 10,000. Electric heat gun works great too, but 
being off grid, I'm gonna save the power and burn a little gas. Keep the torch back a little bit, keep everything from getting burnt. See if the sealant come out of it. Yes, that one's done. Get your view of the sealant or technically adhesive that comes out, but it, it seals the jacket to the heat shrink. So there's how to crimp cables. Hope that helps somebody. Appreciate you watching Aqua Mountain Homestead. Questions, put in the comments. Hope you hit the like button if I earned it. Uh, see you on the next one.